Hello, everybody. My name is Alvaro Coutinho, and I'll be presenting our work a machine learning based workflow for seismic image under uncertainty. Uh, it's a joint work between our team at the COP UFRJ, the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and uh, the Research Center of Petrobras. And the outline of our presentation is uh, first, I will go to the, what our, we see as uncertainties in seismic imaging. I uh, will present our machine learning based workflow for seismic image under uncertainties. I discuss a bit of enabling technology, high performance computing data science, and end with a discussion with our achievements. Uh, uncertainties in seismic imaging are found in, in, in several aspects. Uh, in the picture shows uh, this typical offshore survey, and the seismic imaging is basically uh, to produce images from uh, recorded. Um, uh, Recorded signals from wave reflection in the subsurface. So, um, uncertainty can, can come from the source signature, the acquisition geometry, measurement noise, and of course, the subsurface properties, which are unknown. Uh, in this work, we are uh, restrict ourselves to a subsurface property, uncertainties in the subsurface properties. Uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, since we, uh, you know, the solution for, um, uh, the, the basically PDE model behind the seismic images is wave propagation. And uh, the idea here is to um, solve an inverse problem to, to, to figure out what are the earth properties um, and uh, through, uh, you know, uh, solving the inverse problem basic on, based on, on, on the wave propagation. So, I mean, uh, this panel here shows the two possible velocity fields and uh, after migrating these images, we can see uh, the horizon. Uh, you see that for two possible solutions in uh, velocity fields coming from the acoustic model, um, you see two migrated images with two different horizons here, which can uh, complicate it a lot, uh, the interpreter. So uh, what changes when we consider uncertainty in the workflow? Here in the top, <clears throat> you see the standard um, seismic image workflow. You have the input, uh, subsurface properties like a velocity, density, etc., and then you do a seismic image, basically solve an inverse problem, acoustic, elastic, it doesn't matter, and the output are the reflector position. When you think about uncertainty, your input are rather the subsurface properties probability distribution. Uh, you do the seismic image like uh, Monte Carlo, using Monte Carlo-like method to propagate the uncertainties in your, pro, in, 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 in your uh, properties and output, of course, are the reflector probability distribution. Uh, you know, what are the main workflow concepts here at the table? We are trying to combine fundamental physics with advanced algorithm and tools in HPC machine learning and data science. We are trying to achieve high efficiency in exploring advanced computational resources and using non-intrusive strategies to allow, allow as much as possible code reuse. Um, our workflow has three stages. The first one is by using inversion. Then uh, we have a, a, a sample for the properties and those uh, uncertainties are propagated into the images in stage two. And in stage three, we quantify the uncertainty in the image trying to, you know, um, have the impact of course this risk analysis something that determine the volume of the reservoir or, um, or, or quantities of interest. Uh, the workflows have been presented uh, earlier in this uh, paper here and now we're going to stand this for a, a machine learning based workflow. Well in the first stage then we're going to use um, you know uh, a, a very simple model icon tomography and we have a surrogate for this the physics informed neural network for by using version uh, here you see we saw the factor icon equation which is very convenient for this case and we have the pin scheme here uh, it has the input the position of source and reflectors and we saw for the travel times which is decomposed in tau hat and c and d is the is the error in the data. Here are the residual and the loss is a composition for the residual and um, the, the, the differences in, in, in your data. For solving an inverse problem with pain in the Bayesian way, we have an auxiliary uh, neural network with, with uh, inputs, uh, this, 
the, the, the reflectors and the output, the velocity field. So this uh, stage one is basically uh, by using iconotomography. As a case study, we have here the Marmoz field, which is a very standard benchmark in geosciences. We have a 92 surface shots. We have all the data here, 737 sensors. We start with the random initial velocity field uh, in the inverse domain is this rectangular here. Um, this is basically the deep neural network specifications. Here is a QRS architectures, um, this optimizer. We have uh, four layers and 32 neural spread layers for the architecture for the velocity and for the travel times, six layers. And again, 32 neural spread layers in the dropout technique. You can see, we can see one of some of the by using stuff. Here is the, the loss. Uh, evolution in the, in the epochs for this sample. And this is a reference solution that we see that we are solving more, more or less the same thing. Please bear in mind that as, as in any uh, TensorFlow implementation, you have to rely uh, on the XLA uh, option in order to speed up your computation in the standard in, in the current GPUs. Uh, well, I mean, after training the pin, um, using the workflow, we have a the pin here, and then the, the, we generate the model in training. So we have a, a sample of a um, seismogram. We run the PDF for several, um, several. Uh, we, we, we input the seismogram in, in the neural network and gen, generate uh, and populate our stochastic space uh, with the pins with the several samples of your possible velocity fields. And then we continue the workflow for the next stages. Well, and then uh, uh, having a closer look in the workflow, we have the initial data. The stage one produces the Bayesian tomography. We compress this data, decompress in order to do what we call reverse time migration, but where we have to solve um, uh, a forward and a backward um, wave acoustic wave propagation in our case, and that uh, compose this in the image condition with basically a correlation. And then we provide an integrated seismic interpretation with uncertain maps for the properties for the uncertainty in the velocity and uh, uncertainty maps for the migrated image. So the st stage one is inversion. We have the output as a velocity ensemble. Stage two is migration which is input in the velocity ensemble. And then the method, model color method to generate seismic images and output is a seismic image ensemble. Stage three is interpretation. And then we post-process all this to generate the statistical quantities of interest for the semi-automatic interpretation of our results. So Monte Carlo, that's cost a lot. So one of idea is uh, to take you know, uh, to use high performance computing. Um, and this is basically say that uh, our code is very well optimized for the current uh, GPUs and the current uh, vector processes like the one found in NEC, uh, even for seismic modeling, which basically the wave propagation and the reverse time migration. We also relied a lot of data compression because, you know, uh, since we have to solve the reverse um, wave propagation, we have to read different panels in order to compose the image condition. In, 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 in the top uh, panel here, you see the Marmoz velocity sample, the original one. This is a compressed one with loss of compression, and the, and the difference is very low. And here we can observe the same thing happen in the migrated images. Uh, <clears throat> in this panel here, you can see, uh, well, I mean, a reference with no compression and several several um, uh, levels of compression. And then we use this lossy, aggressive lossy compression, which provide, we give you almost no uh, disk storage as the wave propagates. Uh, this, this table here gives you a uh, glimpse of the storage demands for us uh, considering 10 RTMs executing in parallels. So the rate of compression for the three decays is more or less the same rate of the two, de two decays, which are seen in this panel on the left. Uh, so still, we have to do Monte Carlo. Then uh, in order to speed up computations, we introduce a deep learning surrogate for RTM. The idea here is to use a fully connected deep convolution neural network to learn the relation, the nonlinear map between the velocity ensemble and the images. Uh, you can see the details in our recent paper here. Uh, well, 
is this effective? Uh, taking this as very simple six layers model, you can see here, uh, when we train the, the accuracy of this, uh, our surrogate is very high, uh, almost 0.9%. And more impo important is to take a look at the table below with the Spearman, Spearman correlation index that give you the measure that we are not, we are actually computing, uh, 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 the, we are really propagating the uncertainty, not any, uh, in any statistical device here. We can see as uh, as the number of training uh, samples increases, the spammer index is, is lower, 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 and lower. Uh, on, on, on the left here, we have the, the solution for five random selected image, five or interpreted horizon for five random selected images from the full order model, the RTM and the surrogate model. You can see the relative error between those two is uh, horizon A and E is about 6.7 meters, which is uh, very low because we have here uh, 300 meters um, in, in, in our in, in depth. Uh, okay. Um, Still, I mean, we have the a, a very high dimension of stochastic space because uh, uh, we have a, a velocity associated to every grid point. For instance, for the Marmoz grid size in, in, in this parent is this size, so we have this uh, product in you know, 736 times 240 as it, our stochastic dimension. And to tackle the cost of dimensionality, we use the covalent again. So we have a generator and a discriminator, and that discriminator has a offers a criticism to, uh, to the learning process between in this deep convolutional neural net. Uh, is this accurate? Yes, it's very accurate. You can see the panel on up here, um, the full order model, and the here uh, you can see uh, the image produced by the deep convolutional uh, adversarial GANs uh, trained with 900 sample. We have again an R2 score very high in uh, around nine. 0.95, and uh, here you can see very low error in the pixel by pixel base for this sample. Uh, which is more important is uh, as you increase the number of training samples, the error decreases and R2 score decreases. So uh, this is a very accurate process and acts very well as a surrogate. So how do we use this in the, in the workflow? Uh, we have trained the surrogate model, and then we have we plug it in in the workflow. Uh, the trainer and the generated model. So we have again uh, the first part is the pin for the Bayesian uh, inversor for the icon of tomography. We have the ensemble of velocity fields. We learn the nonlinear map between um, the, 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 the velocity ensemble and the images. And then we use uh, the training deep learning model to populate the stochastic space for the images. Uh, increasing very much the efficiency of the Monte Carlo method. Now we have to go to the last uh, stage, which is uh, the semi-automatic interpretation of you know, our quantities of interest. So the question here, usually the interpreter it needs to locate some horizons in the images. Our problem here is we have to figure out a way to uh, give give the same horizon in all the ensembles. So we use this, um, we do this through a, a method called relative geological time, RGTs, which are computed by an algorithm, as you can see here, which enables the semi-automatic interpretation of the same horizon in all the image ensemble. Um, here is you look how the, the algorithm um, is capable of doing in this. Uh, this is RGT, this is a horizon. Um, the, the interpreter pick up a point and that will generate the horizon. And it's important to the RGT that you identify the same uh, horizon in all our ensemble of uh, images. Um, in the case study with the marble Z we're using here, you can see uh, here uh, the original size of images. This is the instantaneous phase computing by the here is RGT algorithm. This is the RGT, and then four horizons computed for the RGTs. So, I mean, uh, 
with this, we can characterize it probabilistic horizons with the objective to find the probabilistic structure of the selected horizon over the ensemble to give the interpreter error bars. So we use again a machine learning deep GANs to learn from data decondition probability uh, here, uh, where y and x are the horizon vertical and horizontal coordinates, and z the latent variables captured in capturing the ensemble in the data. With this, we can uh, give um, and uh, we can, for the selected horizons, interpret the uh, show the interpreter regions where uh, we have a 99% uh, chance of this horizon is located. So, to close uh, in this paper, we have proposed a new machine learning based workflow for seismic imaging and uncertainties. The probabilistic machine learning based workflow is structured in three stages. Property estimation using physical informed neural network for Bayesian icornal tomography, migration using machine learning surrogates to speed up Monte Carlo algorithm, uh, a probabilistic machine learning image interpretation based on a geometrical uh, construction called uh, RGTs. Uh, and uh, we use enabling technology. Of course, we still have to train. So HPC is still important. Data compression is still important. Future works include pins for FWI, other migration techniques, and further enhancement in semi-automatic interpretation. And of course, the challenge is 3D data. 3D data. Thank you very much. And that ends my presentation.